Hello everyone. I will be discussing about stainless steel crown in detail. Chrome steel crowns were introduced in 1947 by the Rocky Mountain Company and popularized by Humphrey in 1950. Stainless steel is composed of iron, carbon, chromium, nickel, manganese, and other metals. The term stainless steel is used when the chromium content exceeds 11% and is generally in the, age, in the range of 12 to 30%. Chromium oxidizes and forms a thin surface film of chromium oxidized, known as passivating film, which protects against corrosion. Let's look at the advantages of stainless steel crowns. They can be used for badly broken down crowns, can be placed with poor isolation. They are fast, economical, full coverage, does prevent specker and decay, and they are durable. Coming to the indications of stainless steel crowns, they can be given uh, as respiration of various primary molars where more than two surfaces are affected or where one or two surface carrier stages are extensive. They can be given following tricotomy or perpetual procedures. Restoration of primary molars affected by localized or generalized developmental problems, for example, enamel hyperplasia, amelogenesis imperfecta, and dentinogenesis imperfecta. Restoration of fractured primary molars, and as restoration and protection of teeth exhibiting extensive thick surface loss due to attrition, abrasion, or erosion, can be given in patients with high case susceptibility and can be given as an abutment for certain appliances such as space maintainers. They can also be given in patients where routine oral hygiene measures are impaired, for example, patients with special needs and breakdown of intracranial restoration will slightly harm. They can be given in patients undergoing restorative care under general anesthesia if two or more surfaces are involved and in patients with infraoccluded primary molars to maintain user distance space. According to American Association of Pediatric Dentistry Guidelines 2012, children at high risk exhibiting anterior tooth decay or molar caries may be treated with stainless steel crowns to protect remaining at risk surfaces. Extensive decay, large lesions, or multiple surface lesions in primary molars should be treated with stainless steel crowns. Strong consideration for use of stainless steel crowns in children who require general anesthesia has been emphasized by the AAPD. Now let's look at some anatomic differences between primary and prominent teeth. There is a huge difference between the enamel thickness, dentine thickness, pulpal size, and cervical constrictions. For a stainless steel crown, cervical constriction holds a major role in its placement. As we can see, the cervical constriction is greater and there is a cervical bulge on the buccal surface of the primary molar in contrast to the prominent molar. So there are various types of stainless steel crowns. Let's discuss them individually. The first ones are unthin crowns. The example for that is Rocky Mountain. They are neither trimmed nor contoured require a lot of adaptation and they are time consuming. Going on to key tin crowns, some of the examples include Unitec, GM, Denvo, and Denvo Arcadia. They are straight, non-contoured uh, non sides, testing to follow a line parallel to the gingival crest, and still require contouring and trimming. Going on to the pre contoured crowns, they are also called as nickel chrome and iron crowns or unitech crowns. They are, they are also produced by CM Company and St. Paul's Company. They are pre festooned, pre contoured, and require minimum amount of festooning and filling. As you can see in this image, the image represents all the three types of crowns. The crown on the extreme left side is a pre and free trim crown similar to the iron crowns and the unitech crown represents free trim crowns. This, let's discuss about the characteristics of crown form. There are various types as discussed earlier, namely iron, unitech, hockey mountain, and armco. 
Let's first discuss about the stainless steel or stenetic type 18-8 crown. This steel has been used by Rocky Mountain and Unitech crowns. The content includes 18% chromium, 8% nickel, 0.08 to 0.15% carbon, and 70% iron. They have high ductility and ultimate strength. They are corrosion resistant due to formation of chromium oxide layer on the surface and have a wicker hardness number of 250 to 306. Going on to the iron crown, which has ITNL, they are also called as nickel chromium alloy. They are constructed of ITNL 600. The content includes 76% nickel, 15% chromium, 8% iron, 0.08% carbon, 0.35% manganese, and 0.2% silicon. They have high hardness and when, which render, renders it more difficult to contour and adapt to the prepared surface. They have a Vickers hardness test, range, test number ranging between 325 to 350. Let's look at some of the armor material required for placement of stainless steel crown. There are various types of burrs required for, a, for the preparation of the kit, mainly number 169L or 69L number 6 and number 8 and number 330 FG and paper diamond FG bird. Green stone or heatless stone is also required. Wire wheel. The pliers and instruments which are required are number 115 Johnson's plier which is a crown contouring plier, number 800 to 800 417 crown crimping plier which is a unit at first, number 112 ball and socket plier, Sharp scale or instrument, crown and bridge scissors, number 110 hoe plier, number 137 garden plier, glass slab, spatula, cement, rough or polishing wheels, dental floss, and rubber band, rubber dam armamentarium include the whole set of instruments required for stainless steel crown placement. In the image, the extreme left shows the crown turning uh, scissors. On the left side, in the middle, shows the printing plier. On the right side, middle, shows the ball and socket plier. And on the extreme right is the hoe plier. Coming on to the crown preparation, various authors have recommended different crown preparations which we will be discussing in detail. So at first Humphrey in 1950 recommended that the crust of the molars be reduced if necessary and that the four sides of the tooth be reduced but as much fixed structure as possible be left for retention. So in this there was no specific amount of fixed reduction that was mentioned. Rath in 1966 advised that the occlusion of the tooth be reduced so the height of the preparation is approximately 4 mm from the gingival margin. So he gave some mathematical calculations to what should be the amount of the height of the preparation. Minkin Bennett in 1968 suggested a uniform occlusion reduction of 1 to 1 1.5 mm using a 1 mm bird to make grooves in the occlusion surface to guide the reduction. Now, Mink and Bennett formed the mainstay for the reduction of a stainless steel crown, and the same and uh, similar to preparation is being used these days as well. So, Tautman also recommended the occlusion surface be reduced at least 1 mm, and Kennedy in 1976 suggested that occlusion surfaces be reduced by 1.5 to 2 mm. So, uh, there has to be a plan and stepwise uh, reduction of uh, stainless steel crown preparation. So the initial step includes reduce, reducing the occlusion surface, removing any various part, and then interproximal reduction is done. Subsequently, perform whichever type of cult therapy is necessary before continuing with the preparation. So, uh, the rationale behind suggesting the occlusion reduction first is if proximal surfaces are reduced first, even utilizing a wedge rubber dam would result in some gingival bleeding 
and if the bl blood gets on the preparation, diagnosing a small purple exposure will be difficult. The primary principle of the technique is to make the tip preparation fit the crown form rather than making the crown fit the tip preparation. Crowns are oval and rhomboid, which conform to the rhomboid shape of the primary tip. In a compression interproximal reduction, rhomboid form should be maintained. Now, in the image, the reddish area that has been shown is a sweet spot, which is the buccal cervical area in a non-prepared foot surface. As you can see in this area, this is the retention area for the crown. When the crown goes below this, there is a snap fit of the crown, showing the good uh, retention of the crown. Now, when we do a tip preparation, this sweet area has to be reduced a little bit in some cases when the buckle bulge is very pronounced to allow the downward placement of the crown. The first step to uh, the first step uh, for placement of stainless steel crown is rubber dam application. Now, rubber dam uh, is applied in a slip technique uh, for placement of stainless steel crown. As you can see in this image, a slit is extended between the uh, tip which is behind the preparation tip and till the tip which is ahead of the preparation tip. Now, before I move ahead with the uh, crown selection and try in part, I would like to show you a video of the stainless steel crown preparation. This video will make uh, the practical procedure clearer to you. This is a video depicting placement of stainless steel down on this temptation R. The stainless steel crown will be placed on a tip number 74, which is being pointed out with the finger. And this is a typhodon, uh, typhodon uh, placed on the mannequin. This is a video about placement of stainless steel crown with false technique. False technique requires no tip preparation. When we are doing a stainless steel crown, when we are doing placing a stainless steel crown with wall strictly, the major distal dimension of the foot uh, in question is taken. A size greater than the major distal dimension of the crown is taken, uh, selected to be placed onto the foot surface. We take one size larger than the foot surface or uh, the middle distal dimension so that uh, the crown can be placed easily without doing any preparation. Now once we select, once we take the crown, um, the most common sizes that are used in primary dentition is size number 4, 5 and 6. As, as you can see in this image, the exact size of the uh, crown is to be placed as 6, which is one size greater than the mutual distal dimension of the tip. <clears throat> now, once the crown has been selected, uh, it is tried in on the uh, tip in question. Before the uh, selection of the crown, all the various part present in the proximally or on the occlusal surface has to be removed. Once that is done, after selecting the crown, the crown is placed onto the uh, foot, which has been, which has uh, been restored or hair uh, has been removed from that. Now, when we are taking a major distal dimension of the tip, there might be sometimes uh, uh, the a, a difficulty can arise in taking a major distal dimension since uh, the, there is a loss of its structure because of 
uh, in the proximal phase, then in those cases we can take the resistance in distant dimension of the same put on the control axis, right? Now, once the crown is selected, it is tried in by uh, placing uh, the crown first from the lingual side and pushing it towards the buccal side. Now, you have to be very careful in checking that the crown has to be placed buccal side buccal and the lingual side lingual. That is the main key factor. Now, once you have done, the crown has to be placed, like I mentioned already, first on the lingual surface and then pushed towards the buccal side to cross and go below and beyond the cervical bulge. Once you've fitted it properly, uh, check for occlusion and blanching. The blanching is the whitish area that appears on the gym driver. It can be of two types, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal blanching shows that the crown has to be reduced from the buccal or the lingual side. Whereas if you get the vertical blanching in the interproximal areas, that means that the crown has to be reduced from the cervical uh, area of the interproximal margins. Now, um, once uh, everything is uh, checked and there is uh, no blanching, the crown is crimped with the crimping plier on the cervical one third to give a, a proper contour and margin to the crown, which fits well to the pitch surface. Once we have tried in, after that, the crown is uh, filled with uh, Lutein cement, which is most commonly class animal lutein cement, up till two third of the uh, up till two third of the brim, and placed onto the surface, and pressed completely to remove the excess. And uh, also, the excess can be removed with cloths or um, uh, an explorer, uh, whichever is uh, readily available, and. After this, a separating medium is applied around the uh, crown, such as Vaseline. So this was the procedure for stainless steel crown halls technique, uh, which was given by Norman Hall, and which involves uh, no tip preparation at all. Now going back to the crown selection and try in for the normal, uh, normal stainless steel crown uh, placement technique. The crown selection and try-in has to be done. So, for this technique particularly, select the smallest crown that restores three existing proximal contacts. Now, let me clear uh, clear it here that false technique is a technique where no tip preparation is required. That's why we have to take a size bigger than the normal medium distal dimension of the tip, so that. Uh, the crown can go in and slip through the proximal margins easily. But in a normal conventional stainless steel crown preparation technique, the crown has to, the smallest crown has to be taken which fits the uh, pre existing proximal contacts. Following selection, uh, occlusion dimension of stainless steel crown should be same as pre operated tip. It should not be extruding out into the uh, arch in the occlusal side. The sizes range from 2 to 7. And the most frequently used ones are 4 and 5. And after that, 6 number sizes most commonly used. So place or seat the crown from lingual to buckle side, like I already mentioned. Push the crown over the buckle bulge for a snap fit. And check margins for close cervical adaptation extending 1 mm subdue diameter. Check for blanching effect and remove the rubber dam and check occlusion. Going on to the steps of preparation and placement of stainless steel crown, evaluate preoperative occlusion, administer local anesthesia, rubber dam placement has to be done, which is uh, which involves cam placement on the adjacent tip, which is on the posterior of the concerned tip. Caries has to be removed. And crown preparation is done, followed by selection and trial of stainless steel crown. Contouring and crimping is done after that, and evaluated post operative uh, and the post operative occlusion is evaluated, followed by cementation. 
starting with the transportation of an ancient stone steel crown. It involves three types of reductions, occlusal reduction, interproximal reduction, buckle and lineal reduction, which is limited to the occlusal one point. Let's start with the occlusal reduction, which has to be done, uh, which is step one for the preparation of stainless steel crown. A uh, 169 L paper pressure bar is used and depth cuts are made uniformly uh, on the occlusal surface. The depth should be 1 to 1.5 mm of each depth cut. Followed by that, proximal reduction has to be done. 169 L paper pressure or thin paper diamond bar is used. Break proximal contacts at appropriate depth in single sweeping motion. Vertical proximal walls with slight convergence in occlusal direction has to be uh, kept in mind. And feather edge finish lines are must. The common error is ledge formation, which is due to inappropriate interproximal reduction. Coming on to the buckle and lingual reduction, again 169L or taper diamond bar is used. It is limited to occlusal one third as a 45 degree bevel. Rounded or uh, all the line angles are rounded off, and occasionally an exaggerated major buckle or cervical bulge may warrant more buckle and lingual reduction for proper seating of the crown. So, uh, the image shows the placement of depth grooves. Now, this is uh, a normal uh, tip uh, which requires a stainless steel crown on which the depth cuts are given for uniform reduction of the occlusal surface. This particular image where the pointer is pointing shows uh, occlusal one reduction on the buckle surface. And this, uh, the last fourth image shows the complete occlusal reduction. Now, whenever we are reducing a tip, it has to mimic the natural tip, which was there already. But should be a smaller form of the original tip. Now, once we have given the depth cuts, uh, the fuse surface is reduced at 45 degrees to long axis of the tip, like how it, it, it is shown in the image. Again, a similar technique is followed for linear cusp reduction. Proximal slicing is done, keeping the bar in a vertical sweeping motion. And the buckle counter bevel of 1 to 1 1.5 mm is given on the occlusal one third of the surface. Similar, lingual counter bevel is given on the occlusal one third of the buckle, also of the lingual surface. So once the preparation is completed, once the preparation is completed, So it will look like this from the angle that has been displayed in the image. The uh, proximal contact should be broken completely and the tooth should mimic the natural tip, but in a smaller form. The occlusal height of the stainless steel crown reduction should be 1 to 1.5 mm, which is adequate for the placement of stainless steel crown. Now, once the tooth preparation is done, a selector stainless steel crown from the distal space, it usually rocks on from lingual to the buckle surface and pushed inside. When, we have, when the crown is pushed on the buckle side, there should be a snap fit when the crown crosses the cervical bulge on the buckle side. Now, once the crown is seated completely, it, uh, open margins are checked for uh, need for uh, for the need for uh, printing. Now, once the crown has been checked, it has to be removed with a sturdy instrument, like how it has been shown in this uh, image. Crimping is done to adapt the margins. So the previous image shows the uncrimped margins. And the crown contouring plier is used for printing. This shows the adapted margins completely adhering to the natural tip form. And this is the image showing 
the unclean crown which is on the left side as compared to the thin crown which is on the right side and uh, it is important to take note of the cervical one third area which is completely contoured and thin and fits completely um, to the margins of the foot. Now once uh, the crown has been trimmed and contoured uh, completely, a cement uh, is used to uh, move the crown onto the foot surface. The cement which can be taken, the cement which can be taken uh, in the uh, for placement of stainless steel crown is mostly uh, glass animals gluten cement, uh, which is used for um, gluten the stainless steel crown. Now, once the crown is set, it is placed back onto the foot surface, and patient is asked to bite into occlusion. After that, the occlusion is confirmed to check whether uh, proper interpretation is happening after treating the stainless steel crown. So the techniques technique involves proper um, smoothing of the margins so that there is a feather edge margin and uh, special care has to be taken to avoid any formation of shoulders and uh, bills on the cervical area. Uh, so the proper crown fit is depicted in the image on the left side. Uh, the crown fits over the remaining uh, crown and adapts to the thin contour without uh, without having an open end or an area for uh, saliva ingress. Now, uh, what are the evaluation criteria for the preparation? Uh, the occlusion clearance uh, should be 1 to 2 mm. This is basically a summary of whatever we have discussed before. So the occlusion clearance is 1.5 to 2 mm. Proximal slides converge toward the occlusal and lingual following normal proximal contours. Margin excess by moving is poor interproximally. Buckle and lingual surface converge occlusally. Occlusion third of the buckle and lingual surfaces gently are rounded. And all points and nine angles in rotation are rounded and smoother. Crimping and contouring uh, involves bending of the gingery one third of the crown's margin inward to establish a tight marginal fit and adaptation. The, pri uh, the pliers uh, used are number 114 and 800417 for crown crimping and 114 for contouring. The iron crowns require less adjustment because they are pre contoured and pre thin. Coming on to the finishing, now once the crown has been uh, checked and the fit has been checked, so uh, after that, uh, finishing of the crown is required. Uh, grind a bevel on the external surface of the crown margin around the entire periphery using a green stone held at a 45 degree angle to the margin. Now, three things are used for its polishing greenstone, rubber wheel, and wire brush. Smooth and polish margins with the rubber wheel. Polish the entire crown with wire brush. Root, biting, or fine polishing material can be used to get cluster. Coming on to the crown cementation, that is the final step. The crown has to be rinsed and dried. Prepare luting glass and cement and fill the crown to two thirds with all the inner surfaces covered. The crown has to be seated completely and excess cement has to be removed from the margins. Rinse and floss in the proximal areas and check for occlusion. Cements used for cementation of stainless steel crowns include zinc phosphate, zinc oxide original, reinforced zinc oxide original cements, polycarboxylate cement, and glass ionomer lutein cement. Glass ionomer lutein cement is the cement of the choice for uh, cementation of uh, stainless steel crown because of the higher tensile strength they have and they form stronger bonds to liquid structure and to stainless steel crowns than the polycarboxylate cement. Also, micro leakage of glass ionomer cement is less than the micro leakage of zinc phosphate or polycarboxylate cement when used to lute stainless steel crowns onto primary molars. Now, uh, there will be various situations when uh, 
the crown sizes will not adhere to the uh, tip size. So you will have situations when you will have undersized foot and oversized crown or oversized foot or undersized crown. Now what can we do in those situations? We will be discussing about that. They will be called as crown modifications. First, let's discuss about the undersized foot and oversized crown. Due to space loss as a result of long-standing interproximal theories, crown is cut vertically along the buckle wall, free margins are approximated and spot welded. Contoured, cut and relocated areas is shouldered, shouldered and polished. Now, this the images show the procedure for modification of the crown. As we can see, the crown is big and the foot is smaller. A buckle vertical, uh, a buckle vertical cut is given with the scissors. The crown is uh, approximated inwards and shouldered and polished. Now going on to the oversized foot and underside crown situation. Again, a vertical cut on the buckle surface is given. Margins are pulled apart. An addition of piece of stainless steel band material is pot tilted, contouring is done and soldering and finishing is uh, done after that. So as mentioned, a vertical cut is given on the buckle surface, the margins are pulled apart and a piece of stainless steel band is folded onto the uh, crown and which is finished and margin, uh, finished and polished. Modifications are also required in some situations when uh, there are deep subgingival curious lesions. Unfestooned Rocky Mountain crown, which are deep enough, can be used, or lengthening of crown with a spot welded and folded piece of band material can be done. Like in this situation, a band material is folded onto the crown which ex extends below the subgingival areas. Now, in cases when there are open contact, uh, a larger crown should be selected and exaggerated interproximal contours can be obtained with a ball and socket, uh, ball and socket flyer. Also, a localized addition of shoulder to build out interproximal contours can be done. Coming on to the complication associated with stainless steel crowns. First and foremost, uh, interproximal ledges can form due to incorrect angulation of the burr used during the preparation. When adjacent to this partially erupted and contact area is fully established, extensive subgingival to reduction is required to clear contact area, which can result in a ledge or damage in erupting to the burr. It is wise to delay crowning until crown areas are properly established. Maybe we can delay it till three months. Now, next complication can be uh, crown tilt. It is caused by destruction of complete lingual and buckle wall by theory or overzealous use of cutting instruments. They are commonly seen on the lingual aspect of mandibular primary molars due to lack of foot support. Clinical significance is minimal unless it occurs on young prominent molars due to unfavorable supra eruption of opponent foot. Another, uh, another complication that can occur is poor margins. They can cause early exfoliation of involved foot due to chronic inflammation. The common, uh, commonly known uh, disadvantage of stainless steel crown is aesthetics. They, look, uh, they don't look uh, aesthetically pleasing. So to overcome that, um, buckle facing of the primary molars can be placed after cementation um, using composite material. Um, now, one of uh, the difficult uh, complications of stainless steel crown and um, lesser common complication is inhalation or ingestion of the crown. To prevent that, use of rubber dam is advocated. An attempt at removal by holding the child upside down immediately. If, uh, if you are unsuccessful, do immediate chest X-ray. If the crown in bronchi or lung is, or is uh, present, in that case, bronchoscopy is required. Presence of cup reflex reduces the chance of innovation, ingestion, and being more in, ingestion being more likely. 
The crown is usually passed uneventfully through the elementary canal within 5 to 10 days if it is gone into the digestive system. Another complication is occlusal wear. Now, if the wear occurs, crown should be replaced. And if the wear is confined to a small area on the tip of the crown, then a small amalgam restoration can replace that area. Coming on to the longevity. The longevity of a uh, stainless steel crown is observed to be minimum of two years with the least failure rate of all the post-operative restorations, including amalgam, glass animal cement, and ART. So success of stainless steel crown versus amalgam, uh, it has shown that amalgam has a higher success rate uh, a higher failure rate as compared to stainless steel crown and the failure of stainless steel crown is close to minimal and uh, the success rate shows that um, the stainless steel crown longevity is up to four years of age. Coming to the gingival health, uh, it has been documented that last plaque accumulation and frequency of gingival problems associated with stainless steel crown in tiny teeth seem to be unexceptional. Some increased inflammation is seen in permanent dentition after puberty. Metal allergy. Uh, now stainless steel crowns contain nickel and chromium. It is nickel which may elicit an allergic response in some patients. Although more prevalent in females, intraoral allergic responses seem to be more minimal than extraoral responses and are also scarce. Now, to take advantage of the strength of pre formed stainless steel crowns and improve the appearance of the teeth, the dentist can cut away the cosmetically prominent aspect of the crown, remove enough of the lutein cement to leave retentive undercuts, and fill the void with bonding resin from the wood. So, coming on to the preformed resin veneer stainless steel crown for restoration of primary teeth. In such cases, a layer of thick colored material is placed on the buckle surface of the teeth and which is finished and polished. As you can see in this image, this is a pre operative fix interval fixture and stainless steel uh, pre. Buckle facing pre-venial uh, buckle facing stainless steel crowns were indicated for such a case. After the tip preparation, the stainless steel crowns are placed and tried in, and these are the post-operative pictures. So, uh, the Bureau crown, there are various companies which uh, produce uh, pre-venial stainless steel crowns. Uh, one of them is Bureau crown. The next is new smile or finger crowns. Now, uh, yes, stainless steel crown has been the mainstay for uh, giving crowns and primary teeth, but these days the finger crowns are also coming up, so which are more aesthetically pleasing. So, what are the problems with white stainless steel crowns or pre-venous stainless steel crowns? The white facing is prone to fracture and loss. The tip must be reduced significantly more than the conventional stainless steel preparation. Therefore, there are chances of pulp exposure. And they, we cannot trim or crimp as much as we can do, the, do in the conventional stainless steel crown. So the fit will not be as perfect as a stainless steel crown. So to conclude, uh, the stainless steel crown enjoys a wide range of tools in clinical periodontics and will continue to be an asset in the management of the primary and permanent teeth in young children. However, there is a need for further clinical and basic science research into the various aspects of the stainless steel crowns with the advancements of technology and techniques of conservative dentistry. These are the references. I thank you all, and I hope that this lecture gives you a uh, a good insight about the stainless steel crown preparation and the technique used for stainless steel crown. Thank you.